No. What 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 is your proudest moment um, in your career? David, or it may be in, in just in partner experience. What are you most proud of uh, of what you've achieved? You know what? I, I, I'm gonna. T- it's a story actually that that John, our CEO, told one time. Um, there was a partner in the Netherlands. I had worked with them for years. Actually, they signed on around the same time I started with Enable 15 years ago, and um, I didn't know this story. John told me this after he met with them at one of our our events, and and they said to him, they said, you know, if, if it wasn't for David Weeks, our business would have failed. And wow. they, he said he completely turned around what we did. And they're a major organization today. I was not aware of that. I don't believe I did it. I believe that they did it. But I think it was some of those learnings that I, I had through the market that I was allowed to say to them, look, at, I, th- I think you're going down the wrong path and you need to try something new. And that something new grew them dramatically. And they're actually just over 200 people now today. And when I started with them, I think they were six. So, wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Once uh, uh, an organization gets to say 200 and they think, you know what, I'd like to go globally now. I'd like to start going into overseas um, opportunities or hit America or hit another um, another country. What advice would you give them? You know, would you, would you, is it an acquisition or is it, you know what, we'll, we'll expand ourselves? Yeah, you know what, it's, it's probably an acquisition is the easiest route to market is what I would say. Um, I would also say look to get some investment behind you. There's a lot of expertise in those investment companies. And you know, a lot of people when they think about investment, they think I'm giving up my business. You actually don't have to. There's just people out there and investment bankers who will give you cash to go do this, but they still bring a lot of expertise to the table. The second is I would recommend, and we're huge proponents of this, is get into peer groups. Get into peer groups of similar sized MSPs as yourself and learn how they did it. Because the whole point of those peer groups is to share your experiences. And when you learn from somebody who did it, it's gonna help you a hundred times more. So if there's, a, if there's an MSP out there that's thinking I'd like to join a peer group, where, where would they find those sort of organizations? You know what, there's a lot out there. I mean, you can look, there's, there's lists of them if you look on the internet. Right. And it's really all just about finding the one that fits you the best, right? And, and they, go, they come underneath different guises in many cases. You know, for instance, you know, some are buying groups, but they facilitate peer-to-peer engagement within them. Um, you know, you can get into some of the industry associations out there, they facilitate the peer-to-peer. And, and that's really what it's about. You've just got to find the ones that are relevant to your size of business and typically a little bit bigger than you are who have already made that move. So for instance, if you're an MSP at 10 million, you should probably try and get in a peer group with MSPs who are 15 to 20 million. And that way you start to learn from their growth and where they've been. Yeah, great advice. What's been some of the biggest challenges working with partner, the partner experience when they've been working with key customers? So when you've got a customer on, you know, you've given some quite candid advice to the listeners there, and thinking, and some of it they might not want to hear. Yeah. It's, not, it's not. It's not always you know what they want to hear. So, what's been some of the challenges that you, you face when when dealing with these customers as they grow? Yeah, you know what? It, it's the. <laughs> I think the biggest thing in their growth that we hear is, we tell them it's okay to try new things, and if you're gonna, what we say in our business as well, if you're gonna fail, fail fast, right? Um, but when we say fail fast, it doesn't mean try it one time and then just say it didn't work, right? And, and I think the biggest struggle that they have is the marketing side of it, right? We help them with some marketing ideas. They'll send something out, a, a campaign or do some SEO and I got no phone calls. Okay, well, but that's okay because you're building your brand, right? So the struggle is, is I think, really helping them understand that there's some patience behind it and the investment's still a smart one. Uh, and, and as they start to mature, they see that. And it's really just about, you know, you've got to build that image and that brand in the marketplace. People don't just pick up the phone and call you, mm-hmm. right? And, and that's not the way that it works. So you've got to entice them to make that call. So it's a little bit of give and take with, you know, the way we work with them. But that's, you know, those are some of the struggles that we have is, is really just getting them to think differently than what they have in the past because you're at a different level of scale now. And that might even mean that you're going to change your target market. Right, and we're going to start to move up market to larger organizations. That changes your whole strategy and the way that you present yourself. So it, it's you know those are some of the challenges and struggles that we see out there that that we work with them on on a regular and that's basis. That's scary for customers, isn't it? Because they've they've been successful. They've maybe done an SME market, and they don't want to move into that sort of mid market enterprise or whatever it is. How do you cajole them into that? How yeah. do you how do you how do you encourage them to say this is the right this is the right move? Because they could be coming back and saying. Do you know what, David? I took your advice and it's absolutely crashed. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so um, it, it, I don't know if we'd use the term cajole, but that's all right. That's all right. It, it, no, I mean, listen, what we do is, is we support the men. And what we do is we actually give them reference cases. Many cases, what I do here is is they'll say, I'm unsure. I don't think it's going to work in my business. I'm not sure I have the right people. And I'll say, I'm going to put you on the phone with two other MSPs who are in your exact same position who said the same thing to me, and I want you to hear it from them. And our partners are so willing, like we've built a community in our partner base that they're all willing to share. And so I put them in touch with a couple CEOs who say, you know, I thought I said the exact same thing to Weeks, and you know what, we did it and it worked, and here's where we're at. And a lot of times they just give away their secret sauce. Mm. Talking to Secret Source, if you were going to tell the listeners a couple of key things that they could make a difference with their marketing or how they go to market, because there's a lot of MSPs out there that they want to get new business on David, they're not sure how to go out, they might think, oh, let's do an email campaign, let's do this, let's do that. What's a couple of sort of tippets, um, snippets that you can sort of say, try this or try that, that could work? I know there's no overnight success, but what would you sort of advise straight away to be looking at? Yeah, I mean, there's no silver bullet. So one of the things is stop thinking so regionally. Right, it, it, So many MSPs think that they have to work within the confines of a certain square mile radius um, because that's where our business is. And if we have to drive, you know, we don't want to be driving three hours to go do something on site. Drop that mindset. You own a remote monitoring and management platform for remote monitoring and management, right? If you need somebody in another city, I'll get you somebody in another city to support you. Um, start thinking wider because there's a lot of opportunity outside of that. When you narrow that lens, there's a lot more opportunity. The other is that start looking at different sizes of businesses, right? When when we see a labor shortage like we do today or you know economic um, downturn, listen, the larger organizations feel the exact same thing and need help. So that opportunity sits in front of you. So don't think I'm too small or we've never done it. Think about, hey, how do I diversify my customer base so that I get different types of revenue into the organization? And those all generate strategies. So it's it's what we call, a lot of MSPs will see it as headwinds. If you think about them differently, you turn them into tailwinds. Mm, great advice. How do you decide who to partner with? Is there anyone that you wouldn't work with, an, an MSP? Pretty much, you know what, we'll work with anybody, but you know what it is, you've gotta to come to the table with us and be a partner as well too. You know, and, and what we ask for is, is you know, not day to day, every hour we have to talk to you, but have some engagement with us, let us know how we're doing, let us know where we can support you, and when that's required, let us come to the table and see where we can help. Um, because it has to be a two-way partnership or it, it just doesn't work in a business. And what makes a great partnership between a vendor and a partner? Yeah. How does it work? You know what? It's it's sharing ideas. Um, it's supporting each other in their growth and being happy for each other's successes. The other is, you know what? As a vendor, we screw up sometimes, right? And as a good partner, we need to say, we screwed up and we're sorry, but we'll fix it. Uh, and, and that goes two ways as well too, right? And so it's it's all about that dialogue and continuing that relationship. And as long as that's there, you can have those open, frank discussions and, and make it work for everybody. Let's bring it right up to date in between now for sort of 2023. No more flights, luckily for you at the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How do you see the channel maturing in 2023 to 2024? Where yeah. do you see the market going? Yeah, it's interesting. You, you know what I see is, and, and we talked a little bit about this over lunch, but COVID changed a lot on the perception of a managed service provider and an IT service provider. 2024, I think, is going to bring even more opportunity. MSPs have the ability now to be a lot more strategic and touch a lot more areas of the environment. And, and I mean, look, at, we're at the fastest pace of change in technology in the history of time. Your end customer, the end customer of an MSP can't stay up to date with that. They're relying on you. So I think what we're going to see into 2024 is still a continued advancement in security. Um, we're going to see more moving their customers to the cloud. So we're going to have more consulting and professional services that are required. But they're going to be more involved in supporting and building the revenue streams of their customers and increasing their scale and growth. And that's where they're going to start to build a different level of relationship as well, too. And my last question for you, or All second right. to last, actually, okay. what do you see as the biggest opportunity for Enable in 2023? You know, you know what? In, in, for Enable, I think it's to continue to get our message out there, right? That, that we're not just a vendor of products and software, right? We're, we're an educator, we believe in the marketplace. We believe that we bring a lot of thought leadership to the marketplace. Uh, and you know, if 
MSPs and IT service providers out there need help or want to see something from us, they can personally call me and I will help develop it for you. Whether you're spending money with me or not, I don't care because if it's good for them, it's going to help other people out in the marketplace and including my customers. Great. David, now we have a closing tradition on the podcast. Now, I know you've flown over from Ottawa specifically for this podcast, um, but is there anyone that you would recommend in the UK, maybe one of your customers that you think would be a great guest on the show? Uh, you know what? That's that's You're going to put me on the spot now yeah. because <laughs> any of my customers who hear this. Yeah. Um, no, you know what? There's somebody that, that I go to for a lot of advice here in the UK as well too when I want to understand the market. And, mm. uh, his name's Tim Walker with Aura Technology and, and Tim's extremely well respected in the space um, and he sees it very differently than a lot of people. So, uh, you know, my recommendation, I think if you get Tim on and, and he's a good laugh as well too, um, but he's got a really unique insight on this marketplace place and, and he's grown and, and built some pretty amazing businesses. Great. David, you've been a great guest. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, thank you very much. Cheers.